Hi, my name is Peter Chin Hong, and I'm an infectious disease physician and faculty member at UCSF. In this module, we will speak about HIV treatment. Here is our favorite pathogen map that you all know very well with a whole host of my favorite organisms, including the subject of this module, which is HIV. These are our learning objectives for this module. One of the main principles that we need to consider when thinking about HIV therapeutics is that HIV resistance develops rapidly. This is the reason why we need to construct a regimen of combination therapy. Resistance developed very rapidly when single and even dual drug regimens were previously used. This is because of multiple reasons. First, reverse transcriptase makes errors to the order of 1 per 2,000 or 1 per 10,000 nucleotides. Uh, secondly, uh, envelope proteins such as GP120 are so variable. These factors also make it challenging for vaccine development. Here is a depiction of the HIV replicative cycle. You may have seen this cartoon before. Again, note the three phases of HIV, which are antiviral targets, entry, replication, and processing. For now, don't worry about the names of the drugs. In contrast to anti herpes dr virus drugs, we only target one step uh, in the viral life cycle with herpes, which is nucleic acid synthesis. With HIV, on the other hand, it is important for us to target as many steps as possible in the viral life cycle. This will allow us to subvert resistance caused by errors in replication. So our take-home principle is that we really need to attack multiple targets to reduce resistance and to provide synergy. We're going to focus on five classes of HIV drugs in this talk. We'll first discuss entry infusion inhibitors, then NRTIs, or nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors, and then NNRTIs, or non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors, and integrase inhibitors, one of the newest classes around. Finally, we will discuss protease inhibitors. PIs ushered in a whole new era of combination therapy when they were introduced in 1996 and really were responsible for the dramatic uh, survival benefits seen in the population at large when uh, th these were rolled out. How do we organize the HIV drugs in our mind? Probably the most straightforward and traditional ways to organize by mechanisms of action, as I have started to do with you. Unfortunately, they're not really great pearls that I can give you. Uh, the names can fool you, and there's no great clue in that regard. For example, protease inhibitors, lupinavir, darunavir, sound very similar to NRTIs, abacavir, tenofovir. Uh, although with integrase inhibitors, you can imagine that the route tegravir and dalutegravir can give you a clue with a G that uh, we're talking about integrase inhibitors. But suffice to say, there's no really good clue. What's new in HIV therapeutics? Well, the focus on recent years is in new combination dosing forms. So that can permit a simpler dosing and increased adherence, at least theoretically. There's been a little bit of Me Too agent uh, uh, development with a focus on more tolerable adverse effects. We are now up to a point where viral suppression is achievable for most patients, even those in developing countries. We've also had new ways of thinking about HIV drugs, particularly in the realm of the prevention sciences. We'll speak more about this in the HIV prevention uh, slide deck. Let's first start with the fusion and entry inhibitors. There are two drugs that we will explore in more depth in this section of drugs that affect virus entry. And fervitide is a fusion inhibitor. It acts by binding to GP41 in the viral envelope and prevents viral entry in this way. Its main side effect is injection site reactions, since it's only given IM. Resistance can occur when mutations in the HIV envelope, GP41, decrease efficacy. The next drug that we'll con consider is, is Maravarak, which is a fusion inhibitor. This works by binding to the chemokine co-receptor CCR5, and entry is prevented in that way. Side effects include rash and abdominal pain. The drug is not effective if the virus uses the co-receptor CXCR4 instead of CCR5 to the enter the cell. Typically, CXCR4 cells are found late in HIV infection. However, we must check the status to be sure before using the drug, even in recently infected patients. Let's do a case to hone down this concept a little more. So you're about to start antiretroviral therapy on a patient. Which drug does this test 
assess? And will the drug work on this patient based on these test results? What do you think? So the drug that this trophile of co-receptor tropism assay tests is whether or not Maraviroc, the entry inhibitor, will work. In this case, there's a dual or mixed virus population of not only CR, CCR5, but also CXCR4, so the drug won't work since it is a C, uh, CCR5 antagonist, and you would want predominantly CCR5 co-receptors present for drug activity, not just some. Let's now turn our attention to another class of drugs, the nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors, or NRTIs. Again, remember our principle. These NRTIs, or nukes as they, as they are affectionately called, were the first HIV class developed. In 1987, the FDA approved Zidovidine as the first drug, or AZT. Drugs in this class work as competitive inhibitors of viral DNA synthesis. Class side effects include mitochondrial toxicity, uh, lactic acidosis, hepatic steatosis, and lipoatrophy. Resistance in this class can occur when uh, mutations in the reverse transcriptase def decrease efficacy. Uh, some target specific drugs, other kinds of resistance can cause cross-resistance across the entire class. These are examples of the drugs in the NRTI or NUC class. In order to be incorporated into the viral DNA, NARTIs must all be activated by the addition of three phosphate groups to the deoxyribose structure. AZT is a thymidine analog that essentially terminates the HIV-forming DNA chain. So some of the nukes you might hear about include zidovidine, lamivudine, and tricytabine, abacavir, and tenofovir. Here are some of the class, classic adverse effects for various members of this class. I'll mention some of the key points here. Zidovidine, or AZT, as previously mentioned, was the first HIV drug developed. It's known for nausea and anemia, particularly anemia. And I've seen many patients who needed to, to get uh, blood transfusions because of AZT. Lamivudine is very well tolerated, or 3-TCN is often first line. And, and tricytabine is very similar to Zidovidine, and, and, uh, sorry, and tricytabine is very similar to lamivudine in that way. Abacavir is known for the hypersensitivity reaction that can be life-threatening. Indeed, one of the few pharmacogenomic tests incorporated into regular clinical practice as standard care is the HLA B5701 test for Abacavir hypersensitivity. Before we start Abacavir in clinical practice, we definitely want to check an HLA B5701 test to make sure that we can use the Abacavir. Finally, tenofovir, which is one component in Truvada, has been famous recently for its use in PrEP or pre-exposure prophylaxis, is known for its renal toxicity. Tenofovir is often used in a first-line regimen as well. Let's now uh, discuss uh, NRTIs, or non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors. Non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors, or NNRTIs, or non-nucs, uh, work by uh, because they are larger, bulkier molecules, and they are allosteric inhibitors of reverse transcriptase, uh, which prevent viral DNA synthesis. Classic side effects across the class include rash and hepatotoxicity, and resistance can, can occur when single mutations, such as K103N, which is a famous mutation in this class, can impair uh, the efficacy of the drugs. Cross-resistance can be present, and newer generations uh, NNRTIs are more robust regarding resistance. These are examples of NNRTIs. Amongst these, nevirapine is famous for its use in prevention of mother-to-child transmission of HIV in Africa. Others include uh, efavirenz, nevirapine that we've mentioned, dilavirine, which is not as commonly used, etravirine and ropivirine, uh, some of the newer agents. These are some of the common side effects associated with NNRTIs, or non-nukes. With efavirenz, you can see uh, rash, hepatotoxicity, uh, patients complain of vivid dreams, dizziness, uh, you know, some psychiatric disorders, which can be unmasked by efavirenz, and grogginess. Uh, efavirenz is oftentimes a first-line drug, uh, particularly if the patient hasn't had a history of psychiatric illness. Nevirapine is famous for causing rash and hepatotoxicity. 
particularly in women. Uh, it's used globally and, and very widely. Itravirine and ripivirine are some of the newer NNRTIs, which are more robust uh, towards resistance. And the main uh, toxicity, like uh, all the other drugs in this class, include rash and hepatotoxicity. Let's next talk about the integrase inhibitors. These are also known as the integrase strand transfer inhibitors, or INSTIs, or INIs. Uh, they work by blocking the transfer of HIV DNA strands into the host DNA. They're extremely well tolerated with very, very few drug interactions, if any at all. But resistance can still occur uh, by single mutations, and there could be some cross-resistance across the class. The newer generation uh, INIs are more robust uh, regarding resistance. These are some of the examples of the integrase inhibitors. Uh, Raltegravir was the first uh, integrase inhibitor, uh, but some of the later uh, agents include dolutegravir and elvetegravir. Finally, let's talk about protease inhibitors, or PIs. The widespread use of PIs starting in 1996 really ushered in the era of heart or highly active antiretroviral therapy or combination antiretroviral therapy. I was previously known. I think now we just really say antiretroviral therapy, or ART. This really led the way for reversing the death sentence, as was AIDS. Protease inhibitors, or PIs, work as competitive inhibitors which bind to the active side of protease to prevent prote protein cleavage, or these polyproteins that we talked about. There are several class side effects, including uh, GI offset, but more importantly, metabolic effects such as insulin resistance, fat uh, redistribu re redistribution or uh, lipoatrophy, or lipodystrophy, and hyperlipidemia. There are several mutations can, that can cause cross-resistance as well. These are the common side effects associated with specific protease inhibitors. For ritonavir, we can see diarrhea and nausea are predominant with hyperlipidemia. It's not used as a single agent anymore, but rather as a PK booster to uh, allow uh, lower uh, concentrations of the other drugs because it boosts the concentration of the partner drug uh, in the serum. For example, a combination of ritonavir and lopinavir uh, or Calitra uh, allows a lower dose of lopinavir because the ritonavir can boost the concentrations of the lopinavir in, in the blood system. With lupinavir and ritonavir, uh, the adverse effects that are common include diarrhea and nausea. Of course, that's no surprise because it includes ritonavir as well as hyperlipidemia. This was the first drug co-formulated with ritonavir, taking advantage of these uh, pharmacokinetics. Adazanavir is well known for bilirubin and rash. Uh, it's often a first-line therapy for many patients. Uh, despite the bilirubin and rash, uh, it's very well tolerated. Darunavir is one of the newer uh, protease inhibitors, uh, uh, famous for causing nausea and vomiting, like several other drugs in this class. It's often a first-line drug as well. Other protease inhibitors that you might hear about include sequinavir and nilfinavir, as well as indinavir, which were some of the older agents. And some of the newer ones include tepranavir, amprenavir, and fosamprenavir. How do you put the regimen together? Well, most practitioners refer to national and international guidelines published by bodies and groups of experts, such as the International AIDS Society, the IAS, and the DHHS. Internationally, WHO also publishes guidelines. Rather than go into the specifics of each guideline, here are the main concepts. Well, we generally use three drugs from at least two classes. So a typical regimen would be two uh, NRTIs, such as... Um, you know, tenofovir and uh, n tricytabine, plus either one nuke, non nuke, such as uh, efavirenz, or two NRTIs plus one PI, which is oftentimes boosted ritonavir, or two NRTIs plus one in integrase inhibitor, which I'm seeing used very, very commonly these days just because it's so well tolerated. I'll close with, um, with a quote. The effective uh, antiretroviral era starting in 1996 really heralded a new time in the epidemic. 
with new medications came optimism on the parts of patients and providers. Barbara Starrett uh, quoted in the book uh, AIDS Doctors, an Oral History by Bayern Oppenheimer, said it best as, and I quote, I think probably everyone I take care of now is going to live, except maybe two people I currently have in the hospital. Live for years. They all have the potential to die of something else. It's like hypertension in the 1950s, where we had diuretics and other early antihypertensive medications. Many of those people on these imperfect drugs did leave complete lives. So now we're going to have patients who lead complete lives on these AIDS drugs. But hopefully, we're going to have better drugs. My hope is we're going to be able to lower the viral load so low that people will then be able to be on minimal treatment and live full lives. And this was back in the 1990s when uh, protease inhibitors were first being uh, uh, developed and then put into widespread use. I think Barbara would be very, very pleased with the progress we've made in HIV therapy uh, in this era. Thanks very much for your attention.